Okay, afternoon everybody. I'm one of the locals, uh, many of which are sprinkled through the audience, so welcome to Adelaide. I'm going to give you, on that same theme started by Amanda, this is a speed dating version, summary of a, a large project under Lucas's program. It's got a title as long as the, the project is big. Um, so I wanted to pull out the key parts of that title. So what we're trying to do is produce better crops. We're focusing on highly calcareous soils, but that's a problem area for us. The way we're doing that is trying to overcome some of the soil constraints in those highly calcareous soils. So for those of you who aren't blessed with a landscape that's dominated by limestone, you might want some justification behind that. Okay, so why are we doing on, on calcareous soils? Because it's a big soil type for Southern Australia. That map shows you the extent of calcareous soils through, through Australia. You can see it's dominated in, in Southern Australia. A lot of those areas are outside the agricultural zone. But if we zero in on South Australia, any of those patches there within the ag zone which are yellow through to red are dominant, have limestone soils or calcareous soils. Those that are red are dominated by calcareous soils and the whole landscape is in fact based on limestone. So it's an important soil type for us. The reason we're looking at it is it often produces crops like that. That causes many problems. Initially, that sort of vigour is very slow, very poor, makes those fragile sands very vulnerable to erosion. We don't want that uh, from a natural resource point of view. Obviously, a crop like that's not going to yield very well either, so it's not much for the farmer to sell. We want to improve that situation. This is a, a crop from the Upper Air Peninsula, so that's Tasmania West on those earlier um, photos, uh, slides that people have used. One of the culprits behind that patchiness is Rhizoctonia, so that's a soil-borne fungus. It loves that uh, low rainfall, calcareous soil environment, so it's a major culprit behind that poor vigour and patchiness, but it's not the only one, so it's part of the reason they don't perform very well. We're also working in an area, Tasmania Central, but south of that, uh, in the southern part of South Australia, where again we've got cal very calcareous soils, but quite different problems with higher value crops. We want to try and stop this sort of thing happening mid-season for these crops on these highly calcareous soils. Who are we? I think a feature of this project, not only the scope of it, but it's a multidisciplinary team. So we go from the boffins in New South Wales, DPI working away with their iron minerals and trying to change the chemistry of soils through to a field-based team that are trying to make their stuff work in a semi-commercial environment through to our very important links with the farming systems groups that keep us connected to the farmers who are trying to make this stuff work in their business and to get feedback on whether we're going in the right direction. This is what a calcareous soil looks like. Um, some of them are a little bit tarnished by a bit of organic matter in the top. The rest of it's cream because it's basically limestone. Some of these profiles, this one in particular, we're talking about 80% limestone as the, as the base material. So we are farming in crushed limestone. Uh, this is our link to the rest of the world. So that's a calcareous soil with about 15% limestone in the surface. So something we see beyond Tasmania West and other environments, and it's our link to those other mildly calcareous soils. Uh, this is the southeast soil, the southern Australia high rainfall one, again dominated by limestone, but quite a different material. So that's our background, that's why we're doing it. Uh, what have we achieved so far? For all of you that have a, a short leg on your table, we've got the document for you. We've captured all the, all the, everything you wanted to know when we're afraid to ask about calcareous soils and crop production on them. A feature of this document is we spent a lot of time dragging info out of the grey literature. So a lot of the information about crop production techniques that farmers are using or scientists are using at a, a commercial scale are in the greater literature, not the referee journals. So we spent a lot of time extracting that information, capturing that in the one place. Uh, what else are we doing? As I said, we've got a raft of activities and different nodes within the project. We're focusing in on, on topics like improving soil chemistry, understanding water relations. These are sandy soils. They don't behave like sandy soils in terms of their water release curves. Microbial activity, again, is low in these soils, which are dominated by uh, the limestone materials. We're developing novel sort of experimental apparatus, which allow us to look at things like rhizoctonia, a soil-borne fungus, 
and monitor its performance actually in soil material, not on an agar plate or in a petri dish. Uh, this is Essan stuff, it hurts my brain every time I look at this stuff. But you know, what they're doing is investigating these iron minerals to change the behaviour and cycling of soil organic carbon and ultimately influence soil structure and hopefully crop productivity in the end. They're doing a lot of stuff. We have taken some of their material that's come out of that lab-based stuff and using it in field trials with some pretty exciting results. So the most visual part, I suppose, of the project, I mean visual in that you actually can see them with satellites, are our field trials. So we have three sites on the Upper EP, Tasmania West. Um, we have one down the southeast in a high rainfall production zone, chasing a problem where we get a trace element deficiencies on those highly calcareous soils. So here's an example of some of that. This is our benchmark. So this is typical practice, the sort of cereal production we get on these soils in that low rainfall environment on the Upper Air Peninsula. Some of the things we've been doing, we've been been trying to change the actual soil type or the nature of the soil type, we're getting crops like that early on, so that's good, good protection from wind erosion, and ultimately we're getting more grain to sell at the end of the year as well. So we're getting some things that work that change the status quo. I won't be testing you on these topics afterwards, it's just to give you a taste that we are developing packages, strategies that do change production on these highly constrained soils. So mitigation is basically approach fairly cheap, saying we know we've got a pretty ordinary soil. What's the best way of making the, making the best out of it? So low cost strategic applications against saying I'm tired of having a poor soil. Can I change it into something better and still be profitable as a business? So they're the amelioration options. They're a longer term strategy, obviously, and we're making some progress there with some of our packages as well. One of the interesting things uh, with these calcareous sands is that everybody's deep ripping silicious sands now in southern Australia. Um, if you're smart you would have got shares in deep ripping um, engineering companies about 10 years ago. These calcareous soils normally don't respond to deep ripping even though they, they do compress, they are a sandy texture. This is just an example of some of the results. So this is hot off the press. These are trials this year. Um, these are the dry matter production from the cereal. Here's the typical practice, so our standard farmer practice buried in the middle here. You can see you can do things that hurt the crop, so we can go backwards if we're not careful. Uh, but here's, um, here's a typical practice. Here's an amended agronomic package using known techniques but all packaged together. We've nearly doubled vigour of those uh, cereal plants this year. The ones that we're particularly excited about, all those green ones are using a specialised bespoke biochar, which is code for a carbon coated mineral, and there will be disclosure statements at the door before you leave. You'll have to sign before you use those terms outside this room. Um, and here's the nutrient equivalent of that organic material, which is struggling to do the same job as that organic material that was enriched with various sub substances, which I can't tell you about but it does make a difference. There's that product on the right, there's the typical practice on the left. We are making progress in terms of converting those things that are changing soil chemistry into crops which are growing better. So that's the upper EP environment, excellent, just on time, thank you. Here we are uh, down the southeast, trying to address iron and manganese deficiency in a high value crop. These are broad beans that get exported to Egypt for exorbitant prices normally. Uh, when we started the program last year, it's probably the first trace element research that's been done in that district for 40 odd years. Uh, we started, and we'll try and capture a whole season in about four lines. Um, firstly, we started by putting out the trace elements very early, including coating on the seed. Fortunately, we didn't hurt anything. Everything came up, so that's a start. Uh, we had all that yellowing in the trial, which was great, smile so far. But as the season progressed, nothing we did made a difference and we had a uniformity trial of yellow and stunted broad beans right across the trial. Um, happy smile went to an unhappy uh, face afterwards, but we did harvest it out, and we did have a cluster of treatments which didn't get trace elements when a poultry five ton of a thousand dollar a ton product. Um, but where we'd put out trace elements, we got six ton. So certainly an indication that we were making progress. I'm happy to report this is how the trial is looking this year. 
We've actually got broad beans which are staying green, which is what we want, not going yellow. So the plot on there, that's typical practice, what the farmers are doing. This is what we are trying, keeping the beans a much darker green. This is where I got a bit too enthusiastic and cooked the seed uh, with a coating, so we can have too much of a good thing. And we'll see how that progresses for the rest of the season. And that's a wrap up of the Calcareous Soils Project. Uh, lots of teams involved and a major players, GRDC, the Grains Research and Development Corporation. So appreciate their funding of this major project as well. Thank you.